Um, right, you've hopefully made the heading already. Um, we are in this topic of um, geometrical applications of differential calculus, getting better at saying that tongue twist up, uh, which is all about using derivatives, using this process of differentiation to understand, as the name suggests, the geometry of a curve. What's the shape look like? What can we know about where these things goes up and down and, and all that kind of thing based on what we know of the derivatives, okay? We started with the first derivative. That tells you, of course, the gradient function, right? So that means increasing, decreasing, or of course, stationary, right? And you can use that first derivative all on its own, in fact, it's the, it's the safest guaranteed way, to work out what kind of a stationary point do you have. We know there are, broadly speaking, three kinds of stationary points. What are they? One, two, three. What kinds of things are we going to expect? Okay, we can have turning points of which there are two kinds. What kinds of turning points are there? There's a maximum turning point and there's a minimum turning point. Okay, good, so we know what those are. And then, sorry, actually before we go to the third one, how do I know it's gonna be either one of these? Like what is the thing that tells me it's a maximum? If it's a maximum, it's gonna increase, then it goes stationary, then it decreases. So I'm looking for this particular change in sign. Of course, if it's a minimum, it's the opposite. It goes from decreasing to stationary to increasing. So we know what these patterns look like. What was the last one? The horizontal point of inflection. So this is where, at a particular spot, you know the derivative is zero, but on either side, it's got the same sign, right? So it's like increasing, increasing, and then stationary in the middle, or decreasing, decreasing, and stationary in the middle. So that's why it's not a maximum, it's not a minimum, it's just this weird kind of object in here, okay? So roughly speaking, we know what these le things look like, okay? But the first derivative can be quite a cumbersome and slow way to do this because you have to test here and here and here and you've got to know what's going on, you've got to construct a table and that kind of thing. So when we introduce the second derivative, we learn that the second derivative doesn't tell you about gradient. It tells you about this other feature that we saw that was important, it starts with a C, concavity, right? So being that the second derivative tells you about concavity, that also corresponds to these three kinds of features, sort of. If we get a max turning point, which direction is the concavity of the curve? Which way is it facing? It's facing down, okay? Remember, I always like to picture a cup, like is it, you're holding a cup upright or you're holding it down, okay? So this is concave down, which would mean that the second derivative is what? What do we know about it? It'll be less than zero, it'll be negative, right? So negative means down, concave down means a maximum. Likewise, if you're concave up, you have a minimum. Now, when it comes to the horizontal point of inflection, what do you think the concavity would be at that point? Hmm. So, we have to be really careful about this. We're going to explore, this is such a, a tricky nuanced thing. We're not just going to explore it this lesson, we're gonna explore it, we'll explore it later today. Um, often, most frequently, you will find that at that spot there, here, there is no concavity. It's not concave up, it's not concave down. Do you remember, where did my, where did that metal ruler go? Does anyone see where the metal ruler went? It's disappeared. It was really useful. This is, I'm, I don't want to snap this thing. No, does it, <laughs> no, seriously, does anyone see it? Is it like, in, never mind, oh, um, I, I won't do it very much. This has already been broken. Okay, so you guys are witnesses. This starts at, this ruler starts at 20, okay? So, not me. Um, we know that, Concavity, right, is, is this the idea with, whoa, it's like, I can hear it sort of cracking. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it, okay? Um, is this idea of, of flexing up or flexing down, okay? Well, if you have a straight line that is exactly straight, is it facing up or is it facing down? The answer is it's, it's neither, okay? And there's a really easy way to confirm that. Think about a straight line, like, say that. Okay, think about a straight line. Now, we can get to the second derivative just through our rules of differentiation. What's the first derivative? it's just going to be two, which indicates, of course, it's positive. It's increasing, just like you would expect two x to do. But when you differentiate a second time to get to that second derivative, you're differentiating a constant. So what happens to it? 
So it's neither concave up nor concave down. Straight lines don't have a concavity. Uh, just like if you had a lens and it was just a, well, if it was just a window, like a piece of glass, it doesn't lens the line, it just goes straight through, no change, okay? So we can use the second derivative to help us work out what these things are, and it is often, not always, I'll get to that later, but it is often far more efficient. So here is our example function. Let's just map out how we actually use the second derivative and not just find an answer, but actually lay out the work to show why our answer is what it is. If we start with this guy, we're gonna do our stock standard thing, find the stationary points, determine their nature. So if I wanna find them, what's my first step? Okay, let's differentiate. So, this is an easy enough function. You guys can do the legwork for me. No chain rule, no product rule required. What's the derivative? 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Cool. So I found my derivative. What do I do with this thing? Why did I find it after all? I can go straight to the second derivative if I want. I'm kind of in a differentiating mood at the moment. Uh, I might as well since I've got it all together. And then I'll come back to this first derivative. I'm going to need it to find these stationary points, right? So just while we're at it, let's find this second derivative. If I differentiate again, because of the weird symmetry of this function, your first term's going to be 12x squared. Take away. Cool. Okay, we'll put that second derivative, second derivative in our back pocket. The second derivative doesn't help you find stationary points, it only helps you work out what kind of stationary points they are. So therefore, I have to return to this guy. What will I do with it? Okay, I want to find when it's equal to zero. I'm going to say stationary points exist when Okay, uh, this, these four words here, that's that tiny bit of connective tissue to explain like, I know why I'm doing this. It's not just because I'm following steps of an algorithm like someone told me, some textbook example said I was supposed to let it equal to zero. I know why I'm doing it, okay? Uh, in other words, 4x cubed minus 12x squared equals zero. Tell me what to do. Factorize, okay, before I factorize, there's like something even easier I could do. Probably divide everything by four. Okay, now I'll factorize. So, what would you like me to take out? I can take out x squared. That's how many x's is are common. So that leaves me with x minus three. It's early in the morning. I get it. Okay, good. So at this point, I've factorized far enough. I've found where my stationary points will be. X will be equal to zero or three. Fantastic. Okay, 